If you have a Ford F-150 Lightning or indeed a Mustang Mark E electric car, did you know that there's a super secret sneaky way to modify your vehicle settings so that it may or may not do things that it didn't do when it left the factory? For example, if you get really frustrated by the seatbelt reminder warning, even though you always put your seatbelt on, you can turn that off. Did you know that you can tweak the Ford's F-150 Lightning LED light bar to be brighter during the day so other people can actually see it's on and illuminated like it is right now? And did you know that on certain vehicles, like my truck, you can tweak the headlights so that they not only detect oncoming cars and go from bright to dipped, but they selectively dip the area in front of the oncoming car so that you don't blind them with your science headlights. Well, stick around. I'm going to show you how to do it using a laptop computer, a dongle and something called Forescan. Welcome to the inside of my Ford F-150 Lightning, known as a Tal. For those who don't know, this is an F-150 Lightning extended range in Lariat trim, and it's already got over 11,000 miles on the clock, despite me buying it in June. That's because we've used it to tow a car all the way to Colorado. We've used it to take the team all the way to fully charge live and back and to attend other events with loads of camera gear and people. We've also used it around here to carry farming supplies and straw for the chickens and other things from one point to another. In fact, yesterday we had an engine crane in the back of the bed. But while this truck is incredibly competent and honestly one of my favorite vehicles that I've ever owned, it is also really cold outside, like six degrees Celsius. So forgive me if I'm sitting here with the heater on and I'm going to tell you about four scan. No, not that word, F-O-R-S-C-A-N. It's a software program developed by a team of engineers that allows you to connect to your Ford vehicle and then modify certain settings to give you features that you may have not previously had. Take this for example. This is the automatic lighting for my Ford F-150. When we first got the truck, we had the automatic headlights, the headlights that turned on when it got dark in the evening and they had an automatic dipping function. So if you were driving along the road and a car was coming from the other direction, the truck would automatically go from high beams to low beams or dipped headlights so as not to blind people coming in the other direction. But here in North America, we don't have something on our headlights to control the pattern, the reflection of the lights to avoid blinding oncoming traffic. In Europe, headlights have to have a special pattern so that it's pretty hard, even with full beams on, to blind someone coming from the other direction. Over here, we don't have that. It's not required by law. But what more and more automakers are starting to do is to use matrix LED headlight technology to beam form, to make sure that the light only shines where you want it to. Now, we're all familiar with headlights that go around the corner and as you're turning the steering wheel, the headlights follow the direction of your vehicle. But what the matrix style technology does is it detects other light sources within the truck's path and then dims the headlights in just that area so you don't blind oncoming people. This truck shipped with the technology hidden inside it at the factory. And in some markets, it was enabled, but at the time we purchased this truck, it wasn't enabled on the truck. And now that Matrix headlights are legal in the US, I can go ahead and activate it. And that's what I used this for. This is an OBD Link X. It is something I purchased on Amazon. It's got some connectors here that plug into the onboard diagnostic port. And then on the other end, a USB cable that I can use to plug into my laptop. Now, I should point out here that if you are somebody who is not particularly tech savvy, this is not necessarily something that you want to do. Your onboard diagnostic port is located normally down by your left knee, at least on left-hand drive vehicles. In countries where you drive on the right-hand side of the vehicle, your 
port is going to be in a different location. You plug that into your laptop, which I'm going to do right now. Hopefully my laptop is still functioning. It takes a while. This is an old Mac running Windows. So it's not the fastest computer out there, but we're going to run the Forescan app. Here we go. We're going to hit open. And now it will connect to my truck and allow me to see everything that's going on. It reads all of the modules that my truck has and it allows me to do all kinds of interesting things like for example if I have diagnostic troubleshooting codes I can actually go ahead and read them. So I can see here that we have a an error that was set by one of the modules on the truck. This one, I know exactly what it is. Component or system operation obstructed or blocked. Previously set diagnostic troubleshooting code, that's what DTC is, not present at the time of request. Now, what this was, was yesterday when I was carrying the engine crane home for my partner, I had the rear tailgate down and it was blocking some of the sensors. And this allows me to check to see how healthy my truck is. I've got some more ones here. Again, this is a, a left front camera, no signal. It was an issue that we had. Obviously there was a, an issue with some of the cameras and it says that it wasn't working, but the good sign is that it is now working because I can go here into my truck and I can see my camera and I can see all the way around the truck. So I know that all the modules are working as they should. So the first thing about Forescan is that you can use it to check error codes and reset them if you feel comfortable doing so. Obviously, if there is an error, you should always write that error down and you shouldn't really clear it. You should ring up a competent technician and make sure that they are happy. But from an information point of view, it's a great way to check that there's nothing wrong with your truck. And also, if you're going to a dealership, it's a good way to make sure that the dealership are doing their job properly. Recently, we had a problem with my wife's Chevrolet Bolt EV, which was a problem caused by the fact that the garage we'd taken it to was not following proper service guidelines for bleeding the brake system, bled the brakes incorrectly for the Bolt EV, and it ended up that we didn't have proper brakes. That's now been solved, but part of the issue there was just poor training something like this, this program can help you identify any issues that may have been caused by your local dealership. If you go online, there are plenty of forums online that tell you specifically how to go about changing four scan values to give the truck or the car specific features. There's a thread on one of the forums here that tells you how you can go about changing certain values, okay? And here, there are a list of modules which correspond to these modules on the right. So these are the modules people have discovered. If you change certain, certain parts of the data, you can get it to do certain things. This is hexadecimal code, computer um, code effectively, that tells the computer inside the truck how to behave, and it gives it various configuration options. So in order for me to get this to happen, I have to go through all of these modules and make the changes that it says here. If you do it wrong, you can brick your vehicle. And that requires an expensive dealer visit effectively. If you are competent with computer code, you understand hexadecimal numbers, you understand how to go about programming your vehicle, you can give your vehicle by following one of these tutorials features that were not unlocked at the time your vehicle was made, but your vehicle is capable of doing. All I've done is I've done these two mods. Where are they? I have done glare-free matrix headlights, localized dimming of brights based on surrounding traffic. That's what I've done. Um, I made all of these changes to my truck. What you're seeing right now is a demonstration of that in effect. And that means that when I'm driving along the road at night time, my truck automatically um, dips the, the relevant part of the headlights. So it's glare free for oncoming traffic. The other thing that I did 
is I uh, adjusted my daytime running light bar brightness. So when it was new, it was set to 0A, which is 10%. I changed it to 64, which is 100%. So I, I made that modification, which is... So now when I'm driving around during the daytime, the the light bar on the front of my truck is visible, very clearly visible. At night time, it is just behaves like it did previously, but during the daytime, it's very bright, which adds visibility to the truck. Um, you can also do things like change the number of uh, times your indicator clicks when you just tap it, as opposed to locking it, which is what I just did, that's locked. But you know, in a lot of cars, if you just tap it, it'll flash the indicator a certain number of times. Right now it's set for three for mine, but if you want to change that, you can change it to six. Tell you what, let's do that now. SCCM, that's the module we need to modify. Um, and 724-0101. Where is it? Where is the number of blinks? There we go, 7240101. So I've got to find the second group and I've got to change it to 98. So this one, 7240101. And I go to this number here and I'm going to change this to 98. So let me do that. And you double check that that is the module that we are supposed to be modifying, 7240101. And we said it was 98. We're going to write that. Continue anyway. Okay, we have to program the vehicle, turn the vehicle off and then back on. I'm going to hit that button. And I'm going to turn the truck back on. Okay, and then I'm going to hit OK. Now look what happens. If I hit this, fingers crossed, it now clicks six times rather than three times. So if you're doing a lane change and you just want to tap it, it now clicks six times. So that's the basics of this particular system. Like I say, do not use it unless you are someone who is familiar with hexadecimals, someone who is familiar with the concept of using a programming uh, software to effectively change the, the settings of your truck. But if you're someone who has a little bit of nerdy experience, this dongle is available for like 30, 40 dollars. The program itself you can get a yearly license, I think, for about $20 or $30. It's available. Uh, we'll leave the links below and we'll leave links to the relevant forums. Obviously, these settings only work on an F-150 Lightning. There are other settings lists in other forums for other Ford vehicles, including the Mustang Mark E. What you cannot do with this is this is not the uh, this is not capable of updating module firmware for that you need a more expensive cable um, and we're not going to go there because that is the really really high-end extreme stuff but if you want to tweak the settings on your vehicle and unlock certain parameters that were not easily accessible previously that is the way to do it so there you have it that is how i tweaked my f-150 lightning you can do the same to yours if you feel competent and comfortable doing so but don't come running to me if you screw it up, there is a possibility that you can actually damage your vehicle and then you'll have to take it to the dealer and explain why it isn't working. The forums that I'm linking to below do explain how to download your as-built data so that you can always restore it in case something does go wrong. If you liked this video, you know what to do and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts, as is our Discord chat room. There is a link below. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. There are also links below to our Ko-Fi, Bitcoin and Swag Store. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing 
charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters Mike Weeder, Patrick Boyarski, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mjokenhero, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazza in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Centre and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world, thanks to our Starman level supporters, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin and Ian. We'll be back soon with more awesome content for you. But until then, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.